your motorcycles, boy? Boy, I'll say. They're loud, too. All right. Here we are. Um, it is August 2019. Uh, we're well into the third week of August. And uh, this is Marvin Gardens video, August 2019. And where are we going to start? Well, with chives, I think. And uh, buried in there, you can see chives. Uh, and right next to it is Asian basil, which is looking very fine and uh, doing a little blooming too. The blooms are edible and uh, delicious. Our wild arugula um, is also doing well, if not kind of crowding other things out. But uh, we got a little parsley showing here. And uh, the cilantro is long gone. But there's an interesting... That is actually a nasturtium. I guess I must have planted a seed or two in there. Um, and then we've got uh, uh, garlic chives or Asian leeks. And as you can see, they're, um, they're starting to, uh, to bloom or seed a little bit. Uh, so that's nice. That means they'll be um, around next year for sure. And uh, there's Cassie. Always happy to be in the garden. Sniffing around, right, Cassie? Doing good things. Um, but let's go over here to uh, a bed number one and see what's going on. Um, as you may recall, bed one is uh, uh, brassicas more than anything else. But uh, here's an interesting site, and that's uh, a tomato plant. This is a volunteer tomato, meaning meaning that it came up from, um, you know, just some leftover seeds that were um, um, in the soil for some reason. And I just decided to uh, let it go. It's blooming. Don't expect much, if anything, out of it. But uh, I figured, eh, let me let one of these go. Um, then uh, this is uh, one of the first plantings of cabbage, I believe. Uh, finally just coming around. There's another one uh, down under there that you can kind of see this a small head is happening and then uh, uh, a lot of this is what I term as um, various brassicas. Uh, some are cauliflower, some are um, broccoli, some are Brussels sprouts uh, and they're not really showing a whole lot of promise although they are continuing to grow. Um, but as far as production goes, um, like for example, that's not really a super productive Brussels sprouts plant, but there are some Brussels sprouts on them. Now, in between here, I have planted um, a couple of varieties of carrots, and I plant those in this bed because it's fenced and the dogs like to go after carrots. Um, I've also got um, some new plantings of um, uh, broccoli. Uh, don't know how well they'll do before, you know, the, the uh, really cold weather takes them out. Um, but uh, I've got two rows of carrots here that that are doing fine and um, very close to being harvestable too, actually. Um, you can see that's a good sized carrot right there. Um, and then uh, kale. Still going. This is the original planting of kale. I still have a little bit of a white fly problem, but I've been trying um, a couple of different remedies, and I think uh, the one that's a mixture of uh, alcohol, water, and red pepper is working, but I need to do another, another treatment. Um, I think I have a video of me fogging them, as a matter of fact. Um, then this end of the bed is... Uh, Brussels sprouts, and um, they are not looking as good as they have looked in the past, but they're still producing. And um, this is a uh, uh, a canna lily uh, that came up on its own, and uh, looks like it's getting ready to bloom, actually. 
Um, so we won't argue with that. We have pulled some uh, small artichokes from uh, the artichoke uh, bed here. Those are a couple more coming in, which are small, but probably will be edible. I think there's uh, one way up here on the end as well. And um, you might see a, a tomato there just from my stray cast-off sort of tomato plants. Um, some of which are producing, some of which are not. Um, that brings us to the uh, pep memorial area, which is looking, yeah, okay. Got some blooming flowers and uh, they need to just weed it in here to kind of clear things out. So um, uh, things are looking okay. Now let's go over to um, another exciting area if you're a gardener. And that's the uh, compost heap. Um, got a load of manure and I just turned it all over and um, uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm about ready to see if I can get another trailer load of, uh, of manure. Um, and that'll probably uh, do it for um, this, uh, this year's compost pile. And I'll have a fair amount to put on the beds. Um, so uh, that's all looking good. Here we are at the grow house and um, uh, through the magic of video editing I will uh, kind of push the camera right through this wall here and uh, as you can see um, there's still lots of very good healthy growth in there and um, lots of blooming too although almost all of them are male blooms and um, uh, I still suffer from the same problem, which is I don't really have any um, any fruit production, meaning squash. Um, but the very good news is that uh, in spite of all that, um, I have not seen one cucumber beetle or squash bug inside. And also the leaves uh, and the vines are very healthy. They haven't succumbed to... Um, uh, mold, mildew, uh, and um, anything else that has caused that in the past has caused um, sudden um, uh, die-offs of my uh, um, squash, whether they're um, uh, summer squash or winter squash. So um, I, I think I have a plan for for the coming year to. Um, plant much more thinly and also I'm going to put some uh, uh, a screening panel on here to uh, help keep it from getting too hot in there. Um, those are the only two things I can think of that are causing the lack of production. But um, the good news is is that the, the objective which was to keep the nasty bugs out and to uh, um, keep uh, that the the, the um, mildew and fungus and everything else from hurting the um, vines that has been very successful all right so back outside here of the grow house um, this is uh, these are volunteer uh, ground cherries and they're already producing uh, they just came up on their own and um, uh, we also have some spinach that's uh, actually doing okay but not great and um, under here are our are, um, are rosemary plants which um, are really doing quite well they're very slow going but right now they're very well established and um, uh, we're pretty happy with what's going on here these also this whole row here are um, uh, volunteer ground cherries and um, they're already starting to come up with stuff. All right, so this this whole bed here used to be onions, if you may recall, and I've done my summer planting slash fall harvest uh, in in this entire bed. So um, that's what we're looking at here. Now, this is interesting. That's a zucchini, and so is the one down there. 
um, right over there. And um, I had an interesting idea uh, prompted by uh, something that I saw at uh, in one of the seed uh, websites. And that's um, planting um, summer squash late in the season because um, they produce so quickly uh, that you have a chance of getting just a few before um, the frost uh, kills them. So, uh, since I haven't been getting any zucchini out of the grow house, I planted zucchini on the other end. We'll show you that I also planted a scallop squash. But this row right here is uh, uh, a sunflower. They're coming up nicely, uh, followed by another sunflower, also go coming in very well. Um, this row is um, bunching onions or scallions, the uh, Napa Chen um, variety, also coming in nicely. This is a um, stock flower uh, called Cat's Formula. I'm not sure I know what stock flowers are, um, but uh, they are coming up. They're just not coming up quite as vigorously as some of the other stuff. Uh, and this is a trailing nasturtium which of course is an edible uh, flower and uh, I imagine it will vine all over the place looking very good. Um, this is a snapdragon um, but quite frankly I see very little if any of that coming up so uh, that may be a challenge. Um, these are forest blue boy flowers they are coming up need to be thinned a little bit. Uh, this is borage which we have grown before and another um, variety of um, sunflower, this being a uh, dwarf sunflower. So I thought that would be fun to try. And uh, here we have uh, another nasturtium uh, called Empress of I India. And uh, so we'll s they are looking pretty good and we'll see how they go. And uh, this is lemon gen uh, marigolds, which we have tried before with uh, good success. and. Um, they're sprouting eh, pretty well. Um, then we got another couple of rows of spinach because uh, this bed seems to do fairly well with spinach. They need to be thinned out. And uh, of course radishes have such a short um, cycle that uh, you can plant them any time of the year. And these guys are coming up with no exception. Uh, and uh, these two plants are uh, the sunburst patty pan uh, summer squash and the same deal we're just seeing if maybe we can squeak a few off before we get to the cold weather actually the first frost would take care of those guys and uh, there's my very tall shadow because it's 6.30 at this time of year the shadows get pretty long at 6.30 but there's a lovely couple of uh, uh, red night peppers. They're not red, but they will get red. Um, these are uh, King Arthur's. Also a fine, big, uh, numerous peppers. Um, and we have harvested lots of them that are red. Um, but these guys are just green and getting there. Uh, that brings us to tomatoes. These are big beefs. Uh, a new girl. And we get some that are uh, getting close to being ready. Um, uh, Granadero, which is the more Italian paste variety. And of course, uh, Juliet's. Uh, there's some in there that are also getting close to being munchable. But uh, luckily for you, they're not munchable right now. So I'm not going to bunch them while I'm shooting the video. Oh, by the way, uh, I did formally decide that uh, uh, I would name the beds or, or number the beds in the order that I usually go through. So um, that was bed three that we just looked at, and before that uh, was bed number two. So that brings us to bed number four. And um, bed number four, we just pulled some uh, pak choy. Might have some stills of that for you. Um, so we've replanted that with uh, borage, and uh, we've got some uh, new bib lettuce coming up. And look at these scallions; uh, they just look great. These are, you know, 
actually should pull all of them right now because uh, they are perfect. Um, I've got two varieties here, the um, Nebuchan as over in the other bed and uh, Evergreen Hardy Wright, White, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, they're, they're doing just great, so pretty happy with that. Uh, we've got a Bok Pak Choy um, replanting over here. Uh, the bugs like to get to those guys, so uh, we're going to have to treat them a little bit. And then um, we've got a, a, a cutting mix lettuce, which, you know, some of them are coming up. It's kind of hard to see for the, for the weeds. We need to get in there and take care of that. But um, anyway, uh, that brings us to another variety of peppers, the green... Uh, are these the... Uh, I think these are green goddess. Yes, um, which is the banana pepper. They've been producing quite well uh, all season long. And you can see there's many, many more coming in. Um, and then uh, we also have Mellow Star, which are these sort of uh, wrinkly peppers. And they also turn red if you leave them long enough. And uh, they're not a hot pepper, but uh, they're uh, a delicious pepper. And then these are... Um, uh, what's the variety? They're called uh, L. Eden, I think. Yes, L. Eden. And um, I have yet to, to taste them yet. Um, they're supposed to be a, a, a hot pepper, but only like one on the scale of one to five uh, in, uh, in heat. So uh, we're thinking they'll be pretty tolerable. Um, eggplants have been producing quite nicely uh, all season long. And uh, they continue to do so. Um, sometimes instead of purple, they're uh, they're um, uh, yellowish, but they still taste just as, as nice. And uh, we've grilled many, many, many of them uh, this season. Sliced thick um, and uh, delicious. Now I got something to show you here. This is the um, the peanut bed, and. Um, Frankie sometimes is in here um, uh, kind of hunting for frogs and things but when he was in here the other day now of course now I can't find it um, he actually did enough digging that he unearthed some peanuts so if you look right down by my finger there you'll see a peanut and uh, uh, you'll, th there's another one right there See how it's growing on the uh, the end of that uh, little shoot? Um, and, and this one actually is one too. A little tiny one just starting to go. Um, so I'll cover that back up there because they, they really want to be underground to grow. But uh, I was so encouraged by actually seeing uh, peanuts almost full size. Here's another one. See it? Still attached though. Um, and pushing itself into the soil. So um, it looks like we are going to get some peanuts at least. And uh, hopefully with that mass of plants um, we're going to get a lot of peanuts. So we'll see. Uh, that brings us over to a row of uh, a half row of spinach that didn't do much but then uh, beyond that we've got uh, a few celeriac um, plants that are doing okay so far. They're just kind of slow. Um, and as you can see by these blooms that are closing, because it's getting the evening, uh, we've had uh, quite a bit of success with the okra this year. Uh, many pods coming in, and um, uh, right next to the okra is our formally planted row of um, uh, ground cherries which are doing just lovely and uh, this one's so close to being done that I'm going to pop it out of its little husk and eat it right in front of you folks sorry about that um, this is um, um, pole beans uh, they come in purple they cook green uh, we've harvested quite a, f quite a few more of them. Uh, they're slowing down a little bit now, but um, still producing. And, uh, and of course, we've got our 
sunflowers, which are also happening in various various stages of uh, development. But um, we've got a pretty good sunflower year, and uh, not too bad in the zinnia department as well. But let me show you something else that is kind of exciting uh, around here, and that's. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll try to do a post-production uh, uh, zoom in. But right there is a uh, uh, a new cattail um, shoot coming up from ones that I actually bought uh, on eBay. There's another one uh, right over there, and uh, uh, then there's the ones that uh, that I found on kind of public property uh, that I commandeered. Um, uh, and and those are at least surviving, and it looks like they're starting to uh, fuzz out into uh, seeds. So I'll sprinkle those all over. But uh, our new uh, marsh areas are actually uh, coming along okay, and I'm really glad that you know purchase that I did on eBay looks like it's actually going to produce something and uh, hopefully they're not uh, I got them from Florida hopefully they're they're not a variety that uh, won't be able to stand the New Jersey winter but um, I think they're kind of uh, universal and uh, they'll probably do fine but I'm very encouraged that in fact they have um, at least started to sprout some of them. Uh, this is the um, uh, asparagus bed out here in the external uh, bed and um, I don't know if you can see that very well but that's an example of um, one of the, uh, the, sh the the shoots that have come up from one of the asparagus um, uh, uh, roots. Uh, I think that's the crowns, I think they call them, uh, that we buried in the spring. Um, so I'm very encouraged there in the fact that um, uh, we're getting multiple asparagus shoots coming up, which means uh, I think we'll get multiples coming up next spring so that we'll have plenty to harvest, even though um, the harvest is in the first year kind of limited. But um, I am really encouraged so far um, but uh, we're gonna have to wait till next spring to see how well we actually did with the uh, asparagus all right so as we make our way back to Le Jardin with Cassie patiently waiting let me open this gate get through here and uh, close the gate. Oh, there you are, girl. Kind of miss aimed the camera for a while. Right? All right, so what else is new? Um, uh, the uh, fire pit area is looking up just fine and inviting as usual. All these uh, uh, perennials uh, uh, that... Uh, Venita planted along with the annuals are all doing very nicely. Uh, well, we just put up some uh, trellises that she got and we've got some vine vining plants that are climbing nicely on those and um, you know zinnias and marigolds all are doing nicely um, for the most part. Uh, including those guys right there. So, uh, we'll not stop at the hammock for a nap, although it does look rather inviting. Oh, let me uh, give you a quick look inside the greenhouse um, because we are in the, the final stages of, um, uh, of drying the onions. Um, and uh, so we've got our candy onions here. Uh, we've got... Um, Patterson onions here, and uh, we've got uh, red wing, red wing onions here, and uh, everything is doing fine. Although we had 
uh, a few more uh, mushy onions or onions with mushy spots than I remember so uh, a little disappointed about that and we've also um, brought in a few of the uh, most promising um, sunflowers uh, to dry in here and we'll harvest those seeds and plant them for next year uh, so that's what's going on in the greenhouse and as you can see uh, our natural flooring um, kind of needs some whacking but otherwise is uh, is working out just fine so okay so let's head out to the backyard you can say hello to Jolie Hi, Jolie. Well, and um, we'll just uh, get a quick update on the pond and wrap this thing up. Um, this time of year in the pond, um, as you can probably see, the uh, plants pretty much uh, take over, and uh, they are taking over right now, that's for sure. Um, uh, this huge um, calla lily right here uh, has only produced uh, one or two blossoms but it just is um, gotten very big and looks very healthy anyway um, it's surrounded by uh, water hyacinths and our um, border here um, has uh, expanded exponentially there's a little frog right there that just jumped in um, these guys get very big every year um, and uh, we've got another couple of uh, calla lily um, one in a um, an edge uh, pot and one in a floater and then uh, look at this guy a uh, little bloom on that uh, floater plant there which is uh, some kind of a little lily and then our canna lilies have also been blooming all year um, and uh, the waterfall, I just uh, pulled back a lot of the uh, plants that were just sort of overgrowing that whole little stream there. And then, uh, of course, there's the automated fish feeder, which has been working pretty well. Uh, there's really not much else to show you out here. Um, it's looking like late August. It's feeling a little bit like late August. Um, uh, still August, you can hear the cicadas, but um, it's uh, cool in the 70s and uh, uh, things are starting to quiet down around here. Uh, of course, there's no fruit, fruit to show you uh, on any of the fruit trees that we just passed. And uh, uh, other than that, I think that's just going to pretty much do it. Um, this is, uh, well, that's Cassie down there. Um, but uh, this is Marvin Gardens, August 2019. And um, we'll see you next month in September when uh, the fall season really arrives officially. Uh, catch you later, guys. Bye.